Okay, I'm just going to start in um, with some basic principles in the math that they're asking us to do um, to try to demystify some of those uh, figures that they have on the math sheets. And basically, I start with um, when you see terms like micrograms, milligrams, grams, etc. Um, they're talking about mass or what you might think of as weight. And when you think of that, think of dry you know, think dry ingredients because essentially even though you see a bottle of liquid medication there when they have milligrams on there there's actually a powdered drug that is dissolved in that liquid so that's what they're talking about when they measure things in mass like grams um, and then the next unit that we work with is going to be like milliliters, deciliters, ounces, cups, etc. Um, and when you th think of that, think of that's the liquid. So you think of the wet portion of what it is we're talking about. Um, and if you want to think of it in terms of cooking, uh, think like when you're making a recipe and they tell you to measure a cup of something, that it's, you know, it's like a, a physical uh, vol you know, volume that you're measuring. It's not the weight of it. And then um, the dreaded drops per minute. <laughs> and with this, it it seems intimidating, but an easier way to think of it is that drops are are just a unique way that we have to actually measure volume per for a given time by watching the drops in the drip chamber um, and if you think of it think of drops and they you know usually you'll have 10 drops for one milliliter or you'll have 60 drops per one milliliter and if you think of it like like a pie like like you know like when you were in elementary school and you did fractions think of you have two different types of pie. They're both the same size. One of them is cut into 10 pieces, and the other one is cut into 60 pieces, depending on whether you're using the macro drip 10 or you're using the micro drip 60, but they're both, the whole pie is one milliliter. I'm going to make a visual so you can understand this better. Yay, IV pie! Okay, now here's what I was talking about when I was saying think of it like a pie. Over on the left here, you have your macro drip. This up top here is supposed to be like your little drip chamber where you're counting the drops. And just remember that with macro drip, and of course you can remember that macro big, um, you have the, you know, your pie is equal whether it's macro or micro. Um, your pie equals one milliliter, and it only takes ten. 10 of them to equal one milliliter because as you can see they're great big drops there um, and here's your micro see other little tiny drops that's why it takes 10 of them your pie is cut into 10 pieces for your macro drip your micro drip as you can see now don't count those pieces I can't guarantee there's 60 there my art skills are limited um, as you can see though, your um, your micro drip is cut into many more pieces, so you're going to have little tiny drops. But the genius behind this, um, of course necessity dictated this back before we had IV pumps, um, is that by looking at your watch and counting how many drops per minute, we can actually calculate how many milliliters our patient is receiving of IV fluid. Um, and we adjust that, of course, with the little, you know, back when I was working as a paramedic, you know, we had, we used the little roller clamp that, you know, you saw in lab that's on the IV tubing to actually adjust how fast that drip falls to determine how many milliliters of fluid per hour our patient was getting. Um, the easy thing about the micro drip is that because there are 60 pieces of the pie here, there's 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour, so if we know what the hourly drip 
the hourly milliliters are, you know how many drops in one minute it correlates. It has a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I count 50 drops in a minute, then I know that my patient is getting 50 milliliters per hour. With the macro drip, and again, you know, that's going to be for your higher volume. Um, there is a shortcut to doing that as well, but in this case, you have to, um, and you may choose whether or not you want to use this shortcut, if you can remember how to do the math, okay for that one. Uh, the You have to do a little bit of a division problem, and you actually will um, divide that hourly the milliliters per hour you will divide by six because again think 10 drops per mil per milliliter versus 60 drops per milliliter so you have to divide the macro by six if you want to use that shortcut if you don't want to use the shortcut then you can use dimensional analysis um, or if you find if you have another uh, math method that works for you then that works too Okay, I'm just going to start with um, some of the easier problems to um, get started. And this is the sheet I'm using. You guys probably are familiar with this one. Uh, this is what it looks like. If you want to grab yours and have a look, you can put the video on pause while you find it. AD155 practice calculations. And the first one is a question about uh, penicillin. Now they're using the um, the term units and just remember how we were talking about how we have the two different types of main different types of measurement. We have things that are measured according to mass and things that are measured according to liquid. Think of units like a mass. A lot of times these things will actually be a powder that is uh, mixed up in a liquid, which in this case is true, you know, and it tells you in the problem that uh, the order reads, give 75,000 units penicillin G IV. You have a vial containing penicillin G 1 million units, which states to add the 19.6 milliliters sterile normal saline to yield 50,000 units per milliliter. Now, a lot of that is pure distraction in this case, because all, all they, all they've already done the work for you. They've already told you that once you add that liquid, you're going to have 50,000 units per milliliter, and that's really going to be your key for this problem. And that's why I wrote it with the big star next to it there. That that is going to be your calculating factor, is the 50,000 units per milliliter. Okay, and I wanted to stress here that what they're asking you for is that they've already told you that there's 50,000 units in one milliliter so what we need to figure out is the volume so that we get the proper volume to have the 70 to have 75,000 units now if it helps you to think that units is interchangeable with milligrams I mean if you're a chemist you know you'll say oh they're two very different things don't get them mixed up but for our sake, it's a mass measurement. <laughs> um, anywho, so we need to get the volume to get 75,000 units in that syringe or that IV bag. So what we're going to do is take 75,000 units, which is what our order is for, and make a fraction out of it. Put the little bar down and it would probably be helpful if dimensional analysis is new to you to put a little one underneath. One has no unit. So, okay, so we start with that. Put a little multiplication sign. And what we want to do when we're doing dimensional analysis is that our next fraction that we write down or division problem, however you want to look at it, is we need to have, see how we have units here? We need to have the next one with the units on the bottom. So we know that our multiplication factor is going to be that key that we said, 50,000 units per milliliter. So we want to put one milliliter on the top, 
50,000 units on the bottom. So, and then we're simply going to, all we have to do at that point, because that's all we need, we can actually, if you want to, you can cancel out units there, units there, just to make sure that we took care of that, because we no longer need that, we just need this guy right here, milliliters. Multiply across the top, 75,000, multiply across the bottom, 50,000, do your division, and if you can see that, it comes out with 1.5 milliliters. All those zeros, you know, can kind of be intimidating sometimes, and in this case, you could actually cancel out some zeros if that, you know, if you want to make it simpler, we could have canceled out three zeros there, three zeros there. If you'd rather keep them on there, fine. And then the next part of that question says, okay, we figured out 75,000 units. What about for 600,000 units? And you know what? You just set it up the same exact way. 600,000 units. Always, always, always put your unit on there, whether it's milligrams, milliliters, whatever. Always put, label it. Because when you do dimensional analysis, it's essential that you have that on there. Okay, so 600,000 units over one times one milliliter over 50,000. Our multiplier is the same. So we're going to come over here. You get 600,000 divided by 50,000 and 12 milliliters. And um, sometimes for me, I like to um, you know circle the unit that I need to end up with because they're asking you how many milliliters are you drawing up. So I know that I've done, I've set my problem up correctly that, you know, that my proper units are on the top or the bottom and that I'm ending up with what I need. What you end up with should be on the far right on the numerator side of the problem. And again, 12 milliliters is what you should have had for that problem after you've done the math. Okay guys, I have to admit I agonized a little bit over problem two just in terms that I wanted to write it down in a format that was simple and easy for you guys to follow because um, the math does step, step up a little bit there because we do have a drip calculation and they're throwing in a probably an IV tubing set that you'll never ever see because it has 15 drips per milliliter um, but it is good math practice so I'm gonna go ahead and work this one out with you what they're asking um, you to give is 500 milliliters normal saline over eight hours. Um, so what we need to figure out, obviously, is the hourly rate, meaning how many milliliters in one hour. So we're going to go ahead and set up our problem. Again, we're using dimensional analysis, and it's going to seem redundant at times, but if you always set your problem up the same way, you'll get a good result. So we're going to start by putting, they want one hour, so they're, that's that's what they're asking for is one hour. So we start with one hour over one. Then we're going to put, because we want hours on the bottom for our next unit, we know that we're giving 500 milliliters in eight hours. So we put 500 milliliters over eight hours. And what we're trying to figure out, our factor we're trying to figure out is milliliters. So we're going to circle it because that's what we're going to end up with. We're figuring out what we're going to have for one hour. So we end up with 500 divided by 8, which comes to 62.5. And since it's 0.5, we round up. 5 or greater, you round up and end up with 60 milliliters per hour. Now, I know a lot of you guys are just going to look at that and it's like, oh, yeah, I, I could figure that one out, You know, it's just, that it's just a division problem. But, again, we're practicing dimensional analysis, and if you get good with practicing this, then you're going to have better results when the pressure is on and you have these um, problems that ask for a lot of different steps and they're giving you concentrations of drugs and then you're mixing it with IV fluids and all these crazy things are added in there and drips and things like that. Okay, let's do part two now. Um, so we have 63 milliliters per hour. Okay covered this up so that it wouldn't be confusing. So the next part of this is they're saying, okay, so we're going to give you a drip set that has 15 
drops per milliliter. Now, remember how we were talking about our little IV pies? So this pie, you know, it's, again, it's always one milliliter. This one has 15 drops. So that's going to be our factor. Um, so they're asking us to figure out well, how many drops per minute. Well, we've already figured out how many milliliters per hour, the 63 milliliters per hour. So we're going to go ahead and keep that in mind. We'll start over here. So we know we have 63 milliliters per hour. The pie has 15 pieces now. Um, so we're going to split this up into two different problems because I, try, I, I can do it in one problem, but I didn't want to confuse anybody. Um, so we're going to do this in two. First, we're going to figure out how many milliliters in one minute. Remember, this is volume in one minute. And then we're going to figure out drops per minute. Remember, drops, it's like, it's like a counting method rather than a volume. So our first problem we're going to set up, we want one minute. So we put one minute, put our one down for our denominator holding spot. And then we want minutes on the bottom for our next number. So we put one hour, 60 minutes, because, you know, we need to figure out. Uh, and then after that, we want hour on the bottom again. And we know what our rate is 63 milliliters per hour. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, put our 63 milliliters in one hour. See how that cleverly cr cancels out there? So then we do our math problem, 63 divided by 60. And we can round that to, we end up with one milliliter per minute. Boy, that ought to make the next problem easy, don't you think? Okay, problem number two. Now we want to figure out the drops per minute. And we're using that 15 drop per milliliter set. All right, so we're asking for one minute. All right, so we have one minute. And we've already done our milliliters per minute, so... Look at that. One milliliter in one minute. There's cancel out minute, cancel out minute. All right. And then we know that we have 15 drops equals one milliliter. So that's going to be our next fraction. There's milliliter up top, milliliter on the bottom. Cancel those out. So we're left with drops here. So we multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. We get 15 over one. Ta-da, 15 drops per minute. Now there is a third question on this problem, and as you can see, my little whiteboard ran out of room. Um, they're asking how many drops in 15 seconds. 15 seconds we know is one-fourth of a minute, so you can just divide this by four, and you would round that to, uh, to four. Um, I don't have the exact number of it. Um, 4 times 4 is 16. Obviously the number was 0.5 or higher, so we rounded that up to 4 drops per 15 seconds if we're figuring out for the quarter minute. Um, my battery is running down, so I'm going to go ahead and leave you with this for now. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on Facebook or leave a message on this YouTube. Thank you.